this up after this no fap tiktok we're going into no pixel baby no fap to no pixel you already know what the fuck's going on Donnie is gonna fucking dip his toes into crime tonight that's right here's the three minute break now and here is friend of the show noah sampson talking about no fap like no fap for the uninitiated no fap is a form focused specifically on helping people quit porn and pee. masturbation and stay off that fat. There's a website, there's a Reddit page, there's all sorts of stuff online. But today we're gonna to look specifically at NoFap TikTok. If you're still beating your I don't know what to tell you. I relapsed on NoFap 13 times in a matter of two days. If you watch, you've been, you've been trying to quit, stop scrolling. Now I'm not a researcher, I'm not a scientist, so I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna to respond to too many of the scientific claims made by proponents of NoFap. With that said, most of the stuff we're gonna be looking at is anecdotal and it's just kind of silly and fun, so that should be fun. With that silly fun stuff also comes some very disturbing stuff in my opinion so we'll look at that as well if this is too weird or gross for you i totally get it but also you know a lot of people watch no and this site is mostly men that watch it but it does affect people in different ways maybe you've experienced that effects firsthand or secondhand or with your own hand if you catch my meaning that's a masturbation reference all right here we go let's go if you don't know what nofap is it's when you stop beating it you stop watching everything etc etc okay let's get into it okay so here was me three years ago when i discovered no fap and i also started to get into the gym i was low-key losing i was the type of dude to be like yo where the bitches at and then once they come around just be like checking the weather app and shit i was just overall super shy then for eight months i was on no fap and fully celibate and just nothing at all and just working out and i, I got super massive I did gain some confidence too, and my skin started to look better. And that brings me to where I am today. Super healthy looking skin, colorful eyes, whatever else, jacked. Taller, smarter, more limbs, I grew an extra leg. I got another dad. So did he say his eyes became colored? Like his eye color changed? Did he actually say that? Or did I mishear that while I was pissing? somehow i have three dads now he just showed up i don't know where i love that part about the colorful eyes colorful eyes like the excess bus just <laughs> spilled over into his bloodstream and up to his skull and into his eye sockets and lightened his eyes that's a certified gross moment we can state the obvious here right which is that correlation does not equal causation he's not explicitly claiming it but the implication here is that no fab had a lot to do with this stuff and while i think that's true you know no fab is ultimately a, a sort of impulse control it takes effort to curb a habit that you've been doing compulsively for a long time so it kind of stands to reason that that would align with other uh, healthy habits that you're intentionally choosing to do in your life. Going to the gym, skincare, changing your eye color. I don't know about that one, but it's probably more to do with the better habits and lifestyle change. But maybe it's the fat, no fat. So let's check. After you. This is literally what I said to Aiden Ross, by the way, that it was like, yeah, man, it's not because you're fucking quitting porn and quitting jerking off. It's because you stopped drinking and going to the gym, which you fucking failed on all fronts anyway. And, and, uh. Perhaps that has something to do with the fact that he has uh, no impulse control regardless. And his major mentor throughout this entire process was like under uh, criminal investigation for sex trafficking. So, you know. Definitely wasn't the fucking gooning though. Built up in the semen. So at least regulating every two weeks, bare minimum, if not every two months, if not longer what ends up happening is your body creates an excess amounts of semen and this semen has to go somewhere that semen begins to transform and starts to rise up the body your cum turns into steam and this is such a funny thing that people like decided to make up because like medical professionals tell you the exact opposite of doing this which is very odd. Like, like this is genuinely a bad thing. It's not a good thing to do. And I know we laugh about it a lot. Because I remember when this shit first started popping up. And I was just like, what a bunch of fucking idiots. And now it's like a real robust movement, right? And it's so funny that it's like... Directly against what medical professionals would tell you to do. It is what they tell you not to do. And it will most likely lead to you having wet dreams. So, you know. 
and starts flowing out your peen like a vape. Marlboro meat. And bring it to your brain, stimulating your brain with orgasmic, vibrant energy, stimulating the pineal gland, opening up your sixth sense. There it is. I was right. That's it. Your skull gets filled with cum. This will in turn cause your brain to have an orgasm and just wait, you'll be able to smell colors. The only color you're going to be smelling is white because you're going to smell cum because it's going to be in your brain. I don't gross. Everything about this is gross. You can experience cool things like lucid dreaming, like higher frequency intelligence, telepathy, being able to pick up on subtle frequencies. Okay, so this was indistinguishable from satire until he said telepathy. That means it's satire. Surely it has to be, right? Then I checked out his profile. In the master, He's a mastery of men's sexuality. He's a cum influencer, and he's for real about this cum stuff. It's mostly semen-based content, and I think that's great for good for you. You found what doing what you love, and that's important. As you're retaining semen, and your body continues to produce semen, and starts to build an excess of semen, that semen has to go somewhere. So so what the body does is why can this guy say semen like 11 times in a fucking TikTok, but my TikToks get banned all the time and I don't even say semen at all in them. Does that mean I have to start saying semen in my Gaza TikToks? Is that what it is? Like I have to be like, <laughs> you know, Israel has a semen extraction brigade. Now on to the news. Is that what it is? It starts to recirculate all your best proteins, enzymes, and nutrients throughout your bloodstream, which then repairs you at a biological and therefore psychological level to balance out your hormones. <laughs> the, the fucking animation! The magical seed infiltrating your bloodstream, refilling your Fortnite shield. That's what I call a chug jug. Balance out your hormones, your testosterone's going. This is why guys report deeper voice, brighter eyes, brighter skin. They have more of a glow to them. Them, it's because you have all the best stuff circulating through you. I hope you're keeping track of all these benefits, this bountiful sack full of benefits. Confidence, discipline, energy, skin, skin, mental health, skin. Some are even saying it makes your hairs are growing faster than before. These wacky claims are best exemplified by the superpowers timeline. It's a list of a positive symptoms that apparently will show up along your nofap journey from day one of quitting up until day uh, 60 or 90, depending on the chart you consult. No f timeline. Day one through three, blue balls, fighting urges. Week one and two, motivated to succeed and do more, develop a natural and healthy attraction for women, increase confidence, increase gym strength, increase testosterone levels, brain clarity, improve social skills, increase immunity, alpha male science. Two weeks is all it takes. Amazing. Months one through six. Brain resets during this period, depending on how bad your addiction was. Withdrawal symptoms continue gradually getting easier to handle random giant urges. Learn to live with. I just don't understand. Like, I, I feel like NoFap is another situation where like it's targeting dudes that do have a problem, I guess, with fapping. Like it's targeting gooners, right? So perhaps it's not the worst idea that these guys stop fapping. You know? I, I just, I don't get it. Like, this is what Kellogg's believed. Oh, nice. With the benefits of the oh, here's a shorter one. The no fat. Days one through seven, you get a lot of urges and increase in energy levels. Days seven through 21, you naturally get more productive. Days 21 through 60, you... It's like, yeah, you feel more productive because it's like... You were probably cranking one out way too much, man. I don't get it. Also, do these guys like... Uh, is NoFap no nut or can they fuck? And is it different when you fuck versus when you just uh, jerk off? I, I actually want to... I, I want to understand that. Is there a difference? I, I feel like... What if there's a big deviation? There's this big divide in the community where some people are like pure no nutters okay and then some people are uh saying like no it's different when you fuck and then they duke it out you know what i mean they're like no actually there's a difference like your sexual energy gets revitalized when you're inside of a woman um you you feel more energized so you can actually fuck versus guys who are like no you have to keep your cummies inside of you Okay, okay, this is completely unhinged, but hear me out. If masturbation sex increases levels of testosterone levels and high testosterone levels can lead to hair loss and hormonal acne, there might actually be something behind thicker hair and clearer skin, but not for the reasons he's saying. Wait, what?
are you saying that you, you think these guys are, are actually lowering their T levels by not fapping? Because I don't think you can like disrupt your testosterone production that dramatically by simply not jerking off. You know what I mean? You start to feel like a new person. If you use your time right, you'll get productive like crazy. Days 60 plus, confidence is improving every day unstoppable. Some have even made the wonderful, delicious claim that it made their pee pee grow. There was a joke video about a guy saying that no fap killed his sex drive. Oh, you're awake. Well, your teeth are finished, and um, your oh, gums should be oh, here by the end of the where's day. where's my dick at? Some people seem to have the opposite experience of that. No cap, it made mine longer, and my girth increased, lol. For y'all that's wondering, for me, I tried it, I did like 45 days, and mine got bigger. I don't know what he experiences, but mine definitely grew. Whoa, hey. <laughs> he said, because he stopped visiting his dick. I think what happened is, you're confused. Okay? You stopped, <laughs> you stopped taking a... <laughs> you stopped taking a trip to, to Goon Town, okay? And then you forgot about what your dick looked like, and you're like, damn, my shit looks bigger than before. Because <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. At all. Hey, what's up? Before we continue, need to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Air Up. Air Up is a unique hydration experience. Air the Air Up water bottle uses scent-based technology to transform your water into some delicious flavors. How does it work? Well, by drinking through the Air Up bottle straw, a slipstream is created that transports water and air through the scented pod and into your mouth. Smelling in your mouth, oh, it's so delicious. This allows you to keep your body free of chemicals, additives, or sweeteners while still getting that tasty taste that we all know and love to taste. Air Up has 15 different flavors of scented pods to choose from. They got peach, wild berry, raspberry lemon, watermelon, cucumber, and more as well, even two. Each pod lasts for about 160 ounces of water Smelly or water. gallons. To use it, simply fill up the bottle, attach the scent pod onto the mouthpiece, activate the pod by pulling it up, and then drink normally by sucking water up the straw. Don't tip the bottle though. Seriously, Don, I'm gonna be upset if you do. Air Up is a great holiday gift for your friends or family. It is great because hydration is important. And right now you can save up to 30% on Air Up with their holiday bundles. They're only here for a limited time, so get them while they're hot. Go to the link in the description to take advantage now. Okay, back to the video, and sorry. There's lots of other silly content out there about this crap. Oh my god. Oh no. Disney chill. Oh, come on, dude. Man, that's a teenager, brother. Why you had to do that, man? Why you had to do that? Like I said in the intro, I'm not here god. to do a- Noah is such a fucking chatter, dude. That's such a classic chatter meme right there. Big debunking of all of this stuff. The most cited website. Down to the, down to the fucking, like, Bill Burr is actually bad for the comedy that he made moment that he had in the last video that we watched. Is always Which is your brain on partner.com has a list of a bunch of articles basically supposedly supporting uh, the NoFap movement. But even just a cursory glance at the list doesn't explain most of these anecdotal examples of like how people are feeling. And that's just what they are. They're anecdotes. And so I'm not going to invalidate anyone's experiences. If that's how it feels, that's how it feels. If NoFap works for you, it works for you. Live your life. Fill your brain with cum. I don't care. Okay, pause here. Um, I'm editing and looking back over this research and there's some... <laughs> wild stuff that's Research. come up. So I'm not doing a full debunk, but I want to look at some of the weird stuff and just leave it for you to think about. Any no fappers in the audience, pay attention. All of the research on this site and in the books and DVD, I guess. It's a book you can buy, by the way. We're compiled by a guy called Gary Wilson, who is not a doctor. He has no degrees or licenses. He's just kind of a guy. He's an author. Now, as I said, there's a ton of studies that are linked, and so it makes it kind of difficult to go through and debunk them because it's like a thousand. It's a lot of reading. I would just very much question the uh, agenda going on here where a guy selling a book has borderline or explicitly religious views about not coming and this research being the basis for a very popular online movement this is not me arguing that no is good i personally think it's fine as a medium but its most popular forms today are probably uh, very harmful rather that i am skeptical of this movement given the anecdotal nature of so many of its most fervent 
Dude, I, I don't know what to say anymore. I feel like we are fundamentally broken as a society and we will never repair ourselves, okay? I I don't know. What? Yep, he's literally a chatter. Ariel versus Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> Easy, Ariel. What the fuck is a Blainly? And what is a hey? I don't know what either of these are. Ariel's a child? What do you mean? I was a fucking child when I watched Little Mermaid, you fucking assholes. Okay, we're not playing this game. Never mind. Okay, we're not doing it. We're literally not doing it. We are not doing this. I was a child when I watched Little Mermaid. Shut the fuck up. It's literally like, it's literally like saying, I had a crush on Hermione when I was younger. And then people being like, Hermione is a child. Like Ariel versus Jessica Rabbit. I like that little bear had that in the chamber, ready to fire up. Proponents claims. I stand by my point that if this works for you, go nut or go crazy. But also, you know, it can't hurt to look into the research uh, with an unbiased view, which I know is probably hard, for lack of a better word, to do if no fat feels really good for you. Anyways, just had to do that real quick. Okay, back to video. Now the subreddit does have like a community aspect and some potentially helpful posts. People basically just come in and to say, hey, I fapped. I relapsed. This is bad. It hurts my feelings. I'm ashamed. And then the boys come in and say, hey, it's all good, man. You're going to be all right. Just keep going. <coughs> or this woman who shared her story story of how her husband's you know, use is hurting their relationship. My husband is watching, you know, again, he has an addiction to it. And when he starts using, he is very demanding in the bedroom. He doesn't really see me as his wife, but more of an object to get blank from. It's very hurtful and it devastates me. We've been married for two and a half years. I try so much to give him a lot of energy, but I'm a stay at home mom with a seven month old. I have thyroid problems, 40% of my liver, and I'm severely anemic. I'm constantly tired, but I manage to pleasure him daily. I'm just upset that he goes to blank often. It hurts me a lot. This is just a very, is unfortunate story and quite sad and a little bit scary. It goes beyond unfortunate into like abuse territory or at the very least neglect. The dynamic being that she manages to pleasure him daily rather than, you know, some kind of mutual sexual uh, experience. Extremely heavy, extremely dark. But the fact that someone has an outlet to talk about it, I don't think that's bad. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. We see some supportive words in there. Okay, great. One of the funnier things I found was that the NoFap subreddit has a little bit of a beef going with the Goon Caves subreddit. For those who don't know r slash goon caves it's a Let's subreddit go. that's dedicated to people showing off their setups for watching and worshiping so this subreddit is basically the antithesis to no fap it's um pro masturbation and no consumption to the maximum extreme birthday levels. and here's gooning? the post from r slash goon dumb dumb goon pig 17 choose a side i'm not gonna lie i think like the gooning beyond like a haha -ha meme if it is genuinely serious is probably worse than no fab. And it, the the hilarious part about this is that like both gooning and no fab are two sides of the same misogyny coin usually. It literally is an aberration. It's an it's it's literally misogynistic attitudes pushed to the logical conclusion on either end of the spectrum. I am a perfectly balanced coomer, okay? Perfectly balanced. Cooming within reason. Sometimes I feel like a gooner. Other times I guess I feel like no fab. Not really though. I don't know. I just think masturbation is normal, good, and healthy, okay? I don't really understand. I don't really understand why people do either of these things. I have a very healthy relationship with my sexuality and my sexual urges. You know what I mean? Whereas I feel as though these people do not. That's the problem. Typical centrist. I guess, you know, I, I'm a bit of a centrist on this, uh, on this front. Don't you have a fap top? No, I have a personal laptop that I also fap on. I jokingly call it a fab top, but it's not like my goon cave or anything. Sometimes I'm super gooning some...
Wait, I'm just kind of gooning. No, it's just. Oh. They probably need some sort of help more than some random dude on the NoFap subreddit. Yeah. Bro, we know you call your laptop your fap top. You do not have a normal relationship with porn. It's called a joke, man. It's called joking. I don't know if you were aware of it. If we're going to be serious, like, how is gooning misogynistic? I feel like it's just you are you have an unhealthy relationship with, with the sexuality in general. And how is gooning misogynistic? I don't want to fucking pull up the subreddit, but just take a look at it and maybe you will very quickly understand why it can get misogynistic. Caves. I hope they all relapse and become depraved fucks again like us. It's kind of hot that comment of the guy who shouldn't have looked. You know he's going to relapse now. That's kind of hot. Imagine thinking you're better than us because you don't blank when you want. Lol, losers. And then the nofap caption is, they get off to you losing. Prove them wrong. Be better than them. <laughs> Just remember the titans for cream. Here's where things start to get interesting though. There's a tweet that got shared in the Reddit that's- What about gay gooners? Bro, how are you gay and a gooner? I feel like a lot of gooners goon because they just, like, can't really have sex with women. That problem is almost completely eliminated when you're gay. Am I crazy? Like... If you... This is gay Volcel erasure... Gay started gooning first. I feel like the very moment that you can order a blowjob off of an app faster than you can get food delivered to your house, like, you have completely eradicated the need to goon. I feel like gooning comes from a place of, of like, some kind of repression, either due to external forces, such as, you know, uh, being hit with uh, no pussyitis, right? Devastating disease befall that befalls upon many men, okay? Or, or because of other external reasons or internal reasons like, uh, you know, you just, have a, you just have a hard time. Which app, please clarify? Grinder. what do you mean which app? Try being gay and fat? Fetish, there's a fetish for it. What do you mean try being gay and fat? That's what I'm saying, dog. Like, literally. Gay men are men at the end of the day, okay? That's the point. Hello? Listen. If you got a hole, someone's gonna fuck it. And if you got a dick, and you wanna fuck some butt, someone's gonna ask you to fuck them, okay? That's just how it is. It's very... It's very mechanical, almost. Two of my closest friends are gay fat dudes who get gay fat dudes who get laid all the time. Oh, when, when you say gay fat, I thought you meant like they're gay fat, as in they have 14% body fat. You know what I mean? That's what I thought you were talking about. Motherfucker, you masturbate? It's perfectly fine to masturbate even if you're healthy sexually? Yes. <clears throat> I agree. We're talking about gooning, though. I feel like gooning is genuinely an unhealthy obsession with, like, simply the act of masturbation. Simply the act of masturbating to porn. And while, yes... Gays can be, by and large, very fat phobic. There's like a very specific subsect of. Uh, there's a very specific subsect of of fat gays who attract people who want that.
Like I said earlier, the gooning community is very queer. You are 145% crazy. I should have used to be a part of the gooners, and the goon community is very tremendously LGBTQ plus heavy. Okay, then it has to be a, a, a byproduct of, of repression in the sense that, like, you can't be outwardly uh, comfortable with your sexuality, I guess. Like, or you can't be open about your sexuality in public, so that's probably where it comes from. Which leads me to my, to the other side, which is, like, external. Probably something like that. A lot of repression and such. It says, I hope men with a penal addiction or a lust problem know that they have this aura to them. In the Reddit, it was shared with a caption. It isn't placebo, gentlemen. Take what you want from this. There are a few different types of responses in the thread. First from guys that felt kind of sad or ashamed. This makes me feel embarrassed. I think this is the last straw for me. The fact that women can literally tell just by being near you that you're Bro, what are you saying? Dude, oh my god. Abolish Reddit. Abolish the internet. Bro, go outside. Talk to one human that is an adult in your life. Please. What do you mean, dude? What the fuck? That's so sad. That makes me so sad. Like, th th this is basically the fucking Zoomer millennial version of your grandma getting tricked by an, an email train that says like, you know, Guatemalan refugees are coming to your neighborhood to kill your daughters. Okay. Like it's just a different version of that. It's preying on your insecurities. It's not real. A lot of people think, oh, well I have good media literacy because I'm, I was born into a world where I had an iPad since birth. <coughs> It's no different than your fucking grandma that gets scared watching Fox News thinking like, you know, dudes with face tattoos are coming from El Salvador, okay? And they're being dropped off on airplanes. The fuck? You're a coomer sounds terrifying. Coomer, there is, I mean, you you get it probably. It just has the ring of a sound of a, the name of someone that's cooming. Makes me feel worthless. People have said to me before that they could sense I was a funeral watcher, so I think there's some truth to this. What? I saw another group of replies from the sort of incel black pill types. Bullshit. That is what it's called. If people had aura and sixth sense, wouldn't it be so oh, many single mother people getting cheated on or dating monsters? Ted Bundy wouldn't be famous in fame also. I love the Ted Bundy example. Or that one prison guy who, who they everybody says he's hot. Women will date a hot murderer before they date me. An ugly, probably future murderer. Yep, this is BS. She can't <laughs> detect anything. She is creeped out by guys that she finds unattractive regardless if they use her or not. Exactly. That is how they do. Yeah, no, it's because you're unattractive. Totally. Yeah. Oh my god. I love that this is like the, the savior of the conversation is the... The guy with the most confidence in the fucking goon or anti-gooning subreddit. I'm looking through that subreddit that no showed off and gooners apparently use a fuck ton of them. Use Adderall, meth, poppers, and almost any drug to enhance the goon. It's 100% worse than nofap, even though nofap sucks. What the fuck? I mean, this guy has a flair for the specific subreddit that I assume changes every day that he doesn't jerk off. So if you ever listen to this dude, you have to hit a fucking sanity check immediately. Okay? You're done. You're goddamn done. It's Jover. Okay? This is like a direct marker that you are talking to someone who is unhinged. 
Memmefer isn't good looking, doesn't matter if he's the new Jesus and don't touch his D, not even to P, they'll claim he has the bad aura. In other hands, good looking Memmefer can be addicted and will have a good one. Have a good one, <laughs> just like having a good day. People who deny pretty privilege and superficial fucker will create any excuse to cover their bias. Listen, man, I don't know about all that, but now you got me thinking about no fap Jesus. Brings a whole new me. No fap sucks. What the fuck? Whoever goes there goes to see hell for being negatively impacted by his porn addiction. How is that a bad idea in any way? Oh. Because it creates an unhealthy relationship with a perfectly fine and, as a matter of fact, good thing. Masturbation is fine and it's good, okay? There's nothing wrong with jerking off. The problem is, if you make a lifestyle out of, like, shame and feeling awful about, like, a natural sexual urge that you have, that is unhealthy. You're, you're trying to rewire your brain in a way that is not healthy. A lot of people argue that the viewing of porn is bad, not masturbation. No, the viewing of porn is also not bad. Oh my God. Excessive, I guess excessive pornographic viewing could be bad. Or viewing a shit ton of weird porn when you're very young, probably not great, okay? But it's ridiculous to, to act like viewing any pornographic material is bad. What the fuck? Oh yeah, yeah. We have we need sex ed so bad. Porn is bad for your brain development. No, it's not. Oh my god. No, you, if people people make these kinds of things. People make these kinds of statements all the time. No, physically it harms you when it's an addiction. You're just not knowledgeable about this issue. There's a lot of research, and then the fucking research on. Mm, the research is on is from like the Mormon. The Mormon Christian Scientist Foundation backed sex ed research in the University of Utah. It's like, shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. Motherfucker said, there's so much research, which is why you need to do no fap. Like, what is happening? Oh, God. I feel like we don't have conclusive research on whether it affects development or not. University of Utah, super liberal. You're referring to BYU. Okay, fair. BYU. Yeah, people just say, oh, it harms your brain as just an agreed upon thing and present no evidence. Or when they actually present the evidence, the evidence itself is just like ridiculous shit that doesn't meet the muster of like genuine scientific research. And it's always for some random fucking kook who was like a chiropractor for three and a half weeks and did like 11 fake TED Talks, which aren't even real TED Talks, but look presentable. And a bunch of people with that bias that is like desperately not trying to analyze how they view pornography and what their relationship with sexuality and their sexual urges are instead say, oh, I probably went off the deep end. Let me go on the exact opposite direction. <laughs> 3,000 people masturbate to death per year. Why are you minimizing their struggle? <laughs> no. Uh, ay, ay, ay. I, a person who was reasonable on online, looked up the cave Reddit, no mention. On my husband's computer, I tried to scrub it, but I had to explain myself. I've never been more embarrassed. I told you not to do it. Dude, it's porn addiction. It's literally there in the name. It's totally not about shaming masturbation so we could trigger your sexual freedom ideology alert. Wait. Oh, dude. Oh, you called it porn addiction, so it's valid. Never mind. It's right there in the name. My bad, dude. Okay. Can you, can you watch porn in moderation without fucking going nutty mode on it? 
that fine? Is that allowed? Can you do that? Can you just watch porn a normal amount? Can you? I'm asking. Can you do that? What's the normal amount? What's the healthy amount? What is your own personal sex drive? What is the what is the addictive nature of it? What what is the unhealthy amount of porn watching? Like doing crack on moderation? Yes. See, this is why this conversation is stupid because people immediately go, yeah, like doing crack on moderation. Yes. Yeah, dude. The physical fucking addictive properties of crack cocaine is not identical to pornogra- uh, pornography. And you are not going to find a fucking doctor or a real researcher that is going to tell you that it is identical. That is ridiculous. That's a ridiculous thing to say. What? Because it starts as an addiction, it already fucks you up. That's why you need to abstain before you become normal. What? Yeah, also, you started this conversation by saying you're, you're, there's actual research. Your rejection for it is just ideologically based. No, you literally started off by defending NoFap. You said, how is NoFap bad? It's healthy. Okay. Hassan, you're, too, you're talking to two chatters who are too invested in this? I know, but it's great. <sighs> but people on Reddit told me porn is worse than gambling. He might be on to something. Yeah. <laughs> gooning is the most gooning is the most suicidal addiction. It's no longer gambling. Meaning to the second coming of Christ. I said it brings a whole new meaning. The last group of type of guy that I found was the guys who were just curious. They wanted to learn more. What kind of aura? I would say one that pushes away attraction. I know girls can't inherently tell if you use it, but it's definitely the personality of a porn user that created the aura. I'm interested to know specifically what she means. Zay Cliff here is gonna have a crack at it. It means the way you carry, the words you say, the actions you do are unattractive or at least make people don't really wanna be around you, all under the influence of PMO. PMO just means doing the thing that no fappers don't want you to do with normal. What's wild is that we know, based on the statistics of who uses NoFap, which is 99% men, that this entire conversation is speculation. Even if they did want to figure out what this lady meant, instead of just giving their own conjecture, they would need to look outside of the forums to find that. If any of those boys are here, let's just have a look and try and learn a little bit more about this. The perspective in that tweet was echoed in a TikTok, which outlines some of the more specific signs that women pick up on when it comes to this. By the way, I think this is what people are referencing when they see oh, there's plenty of studies on the matter. And the studies are like I said, always investigate when you see studies like this, okay? I'm not saying that there isn't any research that's like valid, but it's like saying there's a shit ton of studies that the COVID vaccine kills you, okay? Yeah, I know. There's, there's a shit ton of studies, okay? I got it. And half the time... Uh, like when Steven Crowder, for example, brings up a study about how like masks are dangerous for you. They're, a- they're actually talking about a very specific study that talked about a very specific type of mask that used a very specific type of chemical in the development of the mask. And that mask could potentially lead to harm down the line and therefore should be discontinued. And then it ended up being discontinued a long time ago. But then Steven Crowder will use that to be like, all masks kill you. Don't fucking wear a mask. You are being fucking manipulated and you have a lot of cognitive biases that are allowing you to be much easier to uh, much easily manipulated. Religious moral beliefs may exacerbate concerns about porn addiction. According to the American Psychological Association, I am, well, let me tell you, I'm a little shocked by that, okay? That's a shocking phenomena 
type of guy. It's a TikTok from YV underscore edit. The first and most common one was about dead eyes. A lot of times you can tell by the eyes, the way that they look at you and other women. A lot of men who have issues with corn have this. I can't tell if she has a tattoo or if she's wearing something. Like, what the fuck is this? Certain, like, dead look in their eyes. Absent. There's just, like, nobody home, especially when they look at women. And it's typically because their brain has been so cornified that they can't perceive women as human beings or as something interesting to, like, engage with or engage in conversation with. Um, they just see women as objects for pleasure. And therefore, they don't have the same kind of curiosity. They don't have the same kind of, honestly, life in their eyes that men who are not obsessed with that stuff will tend to, you know, look at you. They'll tend to be curious. They'll tend to look around. Like, think of, like, a deer, you know, versus, like... I don't know, like an alligator or something. There are tons of comments on this video basically backing up what she's saying here. Men with dead eyes scare me so fucking bad. It's like I'm literally meat to them. The dead eyes, oh my god, yes. They look at you like a prey. They're about... Yeah. That's because of porn. Famously, before pornography was like an industry, okay? Before there was like so much readily accessible pornography... Men used to treat women so much better. Like, when I think about a time when women were popping off, I go back to, like, the 17th century, right? You know, peak. Like, let's go to pre-Reformation, actually, as a matter of fact. I'm thinking, when were women really popping off, okay? Back then, right? Like American Pilgrims, let's uh, that's another good era. Like the 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 fucking Salem witch hunt era, you know. Or was that because, or, or was that because of porn? Were they watching porn? Is that why? Is that why they were doing witch hunts? Because of the amount of porn that they were consuming. Or maybe, or maybe, this is a larger societal construct that causes men to treat women this way. And it's been, like, you know, a, a historic phenomena that we have experienced far before pornographic material was serialized and super easily accessible. I'm just saying. Roman women were kind of popping off. Ironically, Roman women, in comparison to their contemporary counterparts, or not contemporary counterparts, but like in comparison to other uh, women elsewhere, were, you know, doing better. And guess what? You know what else they were doing? They were doing porn. There was like literally porn in Rome. So they definitely had like a lot of sexual uh, theater plays. <coughs> anyway. About to hunt. Just a bunch of other people saying this as well. The next one, and this is a pretty big one I hear about a lot, is these sort of violent depictions of what happens in general, uh, translating to the bedroom, especially without consent. A lot of women lately report that even when they go to like kiss somebody at the end of a first date, a lot of men now just start how is defending porn a thing now it's literally worse than anything nofap does for women you can dm me and i can show you but he's objectively wrong because he's talking from an ignorant and ideological standpoint dude just do basic research not that hard you're talking from an ideological and ignorant standpoint alone brother just explain what you mean just send one fucking link okay and it can't be from like a christian group that paid for a think tank to deliver research about how damaging porn is, okay? Or it can't be from a secular presenting group that is actually backed by the Mormon church. Because I've seen both of these things. Just show me the fucking research. I'm going to play No Pixel after this video is done. Choking them, like, right away. Like when kissing or making out, you have to remember that that is the same thing that somebody would do if they were trying to unalive you. And the fact that men are going into it with no consent, with the fact that it's happening so quickly.
It's funny because this is the equivalent of the violent video games are harmful notion. Basically, it's not that violent video games are in and of itself bad, but rather aggressive people are more inclined to seek out that kind of content. Not even necessarily. No, I don't even agree with that. I don't agree with that. I think unconditionally, violent video games do not make people more violent. Okay? I don't. Just like porn is not supposed to be sex ed. It's not a substitute for sex ed. We need sex ed. I think he's just saying that the porn industry is often sexist and misogynistic, also not representative of what sex actually is like. <sighs> this is an incredibly broad, wide-sweeping generalization that you can't make for anything else and be taken seriously. The only reason why people take this kind of comment seriously is because it is directed towards an industry that churns out content in a puritanical society that heavily stigmatizes sex and as a byproduct of which sex work. That's where this comes from. Sexism and misogyny in general are ever present in every aspect of our lives. Every industry in and of itself is sexist. Every industry in and of itself turns out sexist results, misogynistic results. Violent video games is just showing what people already have. Wait, what? They're not even waiting to get into the bedroom and like, you know, tell you about preferences or anything like that. They just literally will start um, trying to cut your airways off. That is absolutely insane. And you need to safely get out of that situation as soon as you are able to. These again were backed up by a ton of people in the comments. You could just see the likes of the comments. It's a lot of people. The last experience is talking about just being used as like means to an end. You feel like your experience was not important. You feel like maybe they didn't try to look at you. They didn't try to engage with you. They kept their eyes closed. They I, I know exactly what study you're talking about. I did a meta-analysis of the data in the university. The only study that concluded a correlation between video games and aggression found the same increase in aggression after playing sports. Exactly. And that's not actually a proclivity towards violence, but it's actually aggression that you experience after, like, competitive play in general. And that aggression also occurs after playing FIFA as well, not just fucking Grand Theft Auto. I know exactly the study that you're referencing. Anyway, um... But that's video games, right? That's video games and it's uh, and it's false uh, conflation with like an increase in violent actions in general. So a man's of art history are ye old and sex workers aka prostitute nudies, pornography, and sexual material has artistic and historical merit. Who's to say some of today's porn won't be regarded similarly? These are the young things young students will come across in their studies. I mean, there's... Uh, all, all matter of new waves of art has been deemed to be morally degenerate early on. My point is this, okay? I don't think that unfettered, unrestricted access to pornography at a super early age is good. I don't think that at all. I think that parents should take extra care and ensure that their children don't see that sort of thing. Obviously, kids before the age of 18 are still going to find pornos regardless and pornographic material regardless. We all did. I certainly did, okay? When there's a will, there's a way. And God, there was a lot of will on my end, okay? However, putting hurdles in front of children to be able to, uh, you know, limit their access uh, to, pornog uh, to pornography is a good thing overall, okay? It's a very good thing. But you also have to accompany that with sexual education. Sex ed is incredibly important because without sex ed, if you're learning everything you know about sex from porn, then yeah, it's not going to be fucking healthy. That's it. The major problem here is structural problems and not pornography, okay? Just your opinion, bruv? No, this is now. This is not just my opinion, bruv. Oh my God. Anyway. They were like 
physically there but emotionally like completely detached they are having to think of corn instead of your body in order to finish so this perspective is anecdotal right but it's anecdotal in a different way than the nofap stories because the shared experiences from the nofap stories are generally like positive good things their benefits and good traits whereas these are very much indicative of harm shared experiences among a community that hurt people traumatize people so it's like more of an urgent motivation to correct that kind of behavior and i guess the point i want to make for sort of the no fappers is just because you've quit doesn't mean you've been cured of that type of behavior those are deeply ingrained behaviors because a lot of the people that talk about being no fab have been watching porn for a long time and addicted for a long time and the 90 day refresh timeline might feel like it's happening but if you're unaware of how the symptoms manifest in ways that sort of quote unquote scare the maidens then those behaviors might not ever get corrected you might be feeling better but you might still be scaring the maidens you know the last thing i want to talk about and one of the bigger things that kind of worries me about this is that taking the benefits too far can also have a weird effect when they're a do you really think honestly that better sex ed is going to dissuade and prevent impressionable young people from seeking out and watching hardcore pornography no sex ed offers you an actual framework a healthy framework to analyze sex which allows you to not see porn as the only way that sex is supposed to happen okay there are a lot of basic rules that you learn in the real world unfortunately Due to the stigmatization, due to the puritanical nature of American society especially, sex is not one of those things that you can openly learn about, okay, in public, in polite society, or even from your parents in general. This is why porn happens to be the only area where people think they're learning about sex. If we had the same kind of stigma associated with, like, I don't know, other aspects of society, people would be fucking losing their minds off of Marvel movies too, I guess. Or certain people would. That's the issue. The issue is when you are, when you are at least equipped with a healthy understanding of sex and sexuality, you can view porn as simply another medium and not necessarily the only medium where you can learn about this crazy sneaky thing. That's why, by the way, this is ironically another um, less talked about but relatively famous aspect of porn for queer people. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of people have uh, are are purposely sheltered from any kind of queer culture or or queer media or education in general. So the first time they start discovering their own sexuality is through pornography. Okay. Literally. I don't even, I don't think that's healthy either. I, I don't think that porn should be the only avenue for many people, many, many gay people, many uh, trans people, many queer people in this chat have probably first recognized that they're queer because of porn. That's it. Psych student here, the whole psych community had your bag on that one. Agreed. The fact that most American schools, schools still teach abstinent-based sex ed is harmful to development in regards to their sexuality later on in life. Exactly. Sex ed is for education, dude, not suppression. Wait, are you talking to me? You've fallen off. Brother, you've only been here for four months. If you think that I'm like uh, all of a sudden newly defending sex work in general. Oh, oh, baby, you are wrong. OK, a lot of people come in here. They never hear me talk about certain subjects and think I've never actually brought this up before. And this is a new phenomenon or this is something that I'm actually bringing up for the first time ever or something that I changed my mind on. You go back like fucking five, six, seven, eight years in the past and find the exact same commentary. <coughs> bye bye now. Applying that logic to the world of dating because some in the NoFap community lists that off as a potential benefit is that you are horny so you want to date. The reason why NoFap will change your life is that 
since you're not releasing energy to these people online, you're going to satisfy your biological urge to actually procreate and actually want to meet women. My God, this editing, it's going to make me puke. It's giving me scurvy. There has been times where, let's say you're tired at night, maybe you're feeling some type of way a little bit, right? So you just hop on the computer, grab one out real quick, and now you're ready to go to bed. But what I've noticed is that once you actually start doing NoFap, instead of being lazy and wanting to just rub one off and go to bed, you actually figure out how can I actually have a woman in my presence, right? Whether that means you'll start to go out more. You're Bro, this dude is a thought. Like, I realized a lot of these fucking NoFap Andes are also like thoughty as hell. Like, what's going on? Why are you shirtless? Why are you fucking flexing your pecs, big dog? What's happening? actually start to the pursue fuck? and invite girls what? over more and we all know that having a woman in person is way better than having a woman virtually so you get we get what he's saying here right you're not doing that thing by yourself so it you probably might want to go out and do it with someone else as a practical prescription I think that makes sense. But the idea of it, the way this manifests is weird to me. The pursuit of sex is made as the primary goal and it doesn't actually involve physical intimacy with another person. The explicit intent is to just swap out uh, your hand <clears throat> and your laptop for a human, a body. Having a woman in person is way better than having a woman virtually. I don't think that's great in my opinion. I think it's good to be social, but you know, the reasons behind it are also important. And if the reasons behind it are like what this guy's talking about, then that's exactly what the TikTok comments were talking about earlier. If what got you out of the house was to just ha find a thing to do, then the entire rest of the experience of being a human and having human connection is not really relevant. This is why NoFab will help you get more girls. Uh, why is everybody yelling? Yelling at me. Say you're starving, right? And you have no food in the house. What are you gonna do? You're gonna somehow try and get food because there's no other outcome except for you dying if you don't have food. It's the same concept. You are so addicted to watching that. Just because masturbation doesn't negatively impact some people doesn't mean it doesn't all people. What is your logic here? The ones that have an addiction have a very sad life and this subreddit helps them. Bro, what is going on, man? You went from like, oh no, I'm just talking about porn addiction to like now you think masturbation is fucking... Uh, negatively impacting people. Hello? Anne? What does that smell? It smells like something's burning. That shit, you're okay with doing that shit and pleasuring it in that way. When you stop doing that and you realize that there's no more porn, no more thing to watch and self-pleasure yourself, you will go out and try and find someone or do something to get it out. It works. You will have no other outcome except for one thing, and that is to find a girl to do that for you. To get with a girl, bro. I'm telling you, yo, you think I'm crazy, bro. I will say that's the most romantic way of describing a hookup that I've ever heard in my life. You'll be able to get it out by f Notice how, like... I mean, every single no fapper also weirdly is just simply talking about women as though they are objects of sexual desire that they have a role to fulfill, which is to be your cum bucket. Okay. It's a very odd thing that I am observing, at least now. Whenever people are talking about women, they're simply talking about it like, I stop porn so I can fuck this woman, which is a substitute for my fleshlight. You know what I mean? Finding a girl to do that for you. Hi, I found you. Now, by the way, that chatter's been fucking crying this whole time and hasn't given me a single fucking piece, a fraction of empirical evidence, just some data that we can look at and enlighten ourselves. I just want to point that out. How can you please get this thing out of me? For me, please. Charming stuff, truly. I'm just picturing because of NoFap, an army of freshly reformed gooners climbing out of the basement and sprinting towards the local bar, filled up with the confidence that the forums have this gave them it. the superpowers that they are saying they have now, and getting in the bar and scare and just freaking everybody out or doing shit that's uh porn sh porn brain shit. And that's spooky stuff, you know. Just reading what people are feeling, it's spooky stuff. No fat might get you out of the house and in front of the maidens, review, but that doesn't. Mean you're not still scaring them. Editor Noah here, right, last we'll caveat. I'm not saying don't go out, and I'm not saying don't try to go meet somebody and go get all freaky. I'm just trying to say, you know, bring awareness to the fact that you might be doing some of this stuff. Stuff that very much seems to be overlooked in the nofap space, given that these women's perspectives are not represented. And when they are, they aren't engaged with beyond being used as justification to the validity of nofap. Sorry for all the caveats. I'm just trying to uh, change the way I approach these. Okay, 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 okay. Anyways, um, a little- Who was debating that addiction is bad? I don't, I don't, 
I'm not. And I already said, yes, a porn addiction can be unhealthy. It's an addiction after all. However, okay, it still very likely stems from other issues that you have, other underlying issues. It's not porn in and of itself that is causing you to be addicted. So I'm going to look at porn addiction studies to get out of gaming. No, I'm going to play this. A little bit of a different video, a little bit of a weird video, but uh, I had fun. Let me know what you thought of this one. I had certain obligations that made it so that I can't keep covering the things that I want to cover at this current time, but that's okay because now I can now that it's now this is out of the way for the month. Thank you to my patrons for uh, supporting me. Thank you so much. Check out patreon.com slash S-A-M-S-E-N if you want ad free crap. Hope you liked it. See it. Bye. And next time, enjoy. Many recognize that several behaviors potentially affecting the reward circuitry in human brains lead to a loss of control and other symptoms of addiction, at least some individuals. Regarding internet addiction, neuroscientific research shows... Regarding internet addiction, neuroscientific research supports the assumption that underlying neural processes are similar to substance addiction. The APA is recognized... Wait. Talking about internet addiction, but then also sneaking in pornography into it, has recognized one such internet related behavior. Internet gaming is a potentially addictive disorder, warranting further study in the 2013 revision of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Other internet behaviors, uh, e.g., internet pornography use, were not covered within this review. We give a summary of the concepts proposed underlying addiction and give an overview about neuroscientific studies on the internet addiction and internet gaming disorder. Moreover, we reviewed a neuroscientific literature on internet pornography addiction and connect the results of the addiction model. The review leads to the conclusion that the internet pornography addiction fits into the addiction framework and shares similar basic mechanisms with substance addiction. Together with studies on internet addiction and internet gaming disorder, we see strong evidence for considering addictive internet behaviors as a behavioral addiction. Okay. Future research needs to address whether or not there are specific differences between substance and behavioral addiction. A revolutionary paradigm shift is occurring in the field of addiction. There's greatly impact. Yeah, there's great implications for assessment and treatment. How many times was that paper cited? Um, I mean, it. Uh, this is like I don't. I don't think that this is what he thinks. I don't think this is study is saying what he thinks it's saying. Like, that's it. Uh, that is not true, Chatter. There are many mental health issues that there are numerous sources of media that provide an addiction, like feeling, stealing, jerking. There are many different things. No, you... Like, this study says that it should, or there is more research necessary to factor in behavioral addiction separate from substance addiction and internet pornography should be considered in a similar capacity to internet gaming. Okay. Which also can be addictive as well. Yes. There was no time scope placed upon the research. Internet research addictive sexual behaviors on the internet began with an inquiry into various contracts surrounding compulsive sexual behavior. There was no scientific time delimitation for this research. However, as with behavioral addiction, analytical priority was placed upon literature reviews and articles published in the newest and oldest methodology, compulsive sex, cybersex, hypersexual, hypersexual disorder, and imaging, impulsive sex, neurobiolog, out of control sex problem, sex, sex addict. Uh, literature review. This is just looking at all the literature readily available. Why do we care if it's addictive? Like, don't you literally agree with that point? I do. And I don't think that this, uh, I don't think NoFap is the healthy solution to this. It can be, just like anything else, Everything can be addictive. You can develop a behavioral addiction to anything. Some people develop it to the top of the hour ad break. I literally talked about how gooners are also on the deep end of the other side of the spectrum. Okay? Some people even goon. 
some people even goon to the motherfucking top of the hour ab break. However, NoFap as a concept, as a solution, is not the right one. Because... NoFap does not examine the underlying problems that are causing you to be addicted to pornography. Pornography in and of itself, just like many other behavioral addictions, okay, is not simply caused by the stimuli in and of itself. And if you have an unhealthy relationship with sex and sexuality then you are moving away from the actual problem and solving the actual problem. NoFap is just a pure break entirely that requires no further examination as to why you have developed an unhealthy addiction to watching porn. This is my point. It has been my point since the beginning. Anyway, it's not good to say I am addicted to pornography, so I cut out masturbation and even pornography altogether. Yeah, because a lot of NoFap people say that porn is evil or making you do it makes sense. I'm a substance use disorder counselor and something said often is that drug and alcohol use are a symptom of a deeper issue. Yes, except drug and alcohol use also are like that, that, that also has a physical property, like a physically addictive property on top of that, which is different from a behavioral addiction in general. This is my point. This study in and of itself says this warrants further research. Everything this study is saying is what Hassan learned firsthand with no pixel. Kind of not wrong. Okay. Exactly. This literature, the literature is more than clear on this. The fact that it is an addiction is defined clinically, not socially. Addiction is defined by markers and behavior. If the behaviors become burdensome in some way, financially, time-wise, etc., it's not an addiction, it's a habit. And habits can be good or bad depending solely on frequency. <sighs> then what are you debating against here? Porn addiction exists and it negatively impacts people's lives. It doesn't have to stigmatize masturbation, even if some wrongly believe so. But the ones with the addiction need... Help through this with a community. Brother, you are actively, you are actively, if you, you, first of all, don't play fast and lose. You started with NoFap. You said NoFap is healthy and that I shouldn't be fucking attacking NoFap and making fun of NoFap. Okay? So don't move away from that major talking point. And I told you in that same time frame that NoFap is unhealthy, so is gooning. Okay? And it's on the opposite side of it. Pornography and masturbation are perfectly healthy in moderation. Okay? Pornography and masturbation are perfectly healthy in moderation. Can some people develop behavioral addictions to consuming pornography? That it becomes burdensome? That it starts taking up time from their lives? Sure. Of course. But there's always another underlying reason. And most of that comes from repression. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know. Everyone has a different journey. Everyone has different issues that contribute to it. 
But if you are not examining yourself with a licensed professional and trying to figure out what the underlying reasoning for why you have become so deeply and cripplingly addicted to watching porn and simply going, fuck it, I'm just going to stop jerking off altogether, you are actually suppressing those very same triggers that will probably, likely, down the line, cause you even more issues. That is simply what I'm saying. And NoFap does that. It gets people to brush aside the actual problem. NoFap, in many ways, is similar to what I always say about painkillers. Do some people absolutely need painkillers to survive? Yes, 1 million percent. There are certain injuries that require you to have some kind of painkillers to be normal. But in a lot of instances, injuries have to be healed. Okay? Painkillers, on the other hand, create a over-reliance so you no longer have that stimulation. So you no longer have the stimuli. You no longer are in pain. Okay? But that doesn't mean you are actually healing the underlying problem, which is precisely why you need to do PT. NoFap in this situation is like taking fucking morphine for a, a gamer neck that you have, okay? Because you're constantly sitting like this. And instead of engaging in corrective uh, exercises with a personal, uh, with a physical therapist or personal trainer or something like that, and, and you just like simply keep fucking taking morphine for it, you haven't solved the problem. The issue still exists. The issue still exists within you, and it's becoming worse and worse. Okay? Anyway. Like I said, this is very important to recognize. 